Hey there, I'm back to talk about the second C in the five C's of good copy editing. If you've missed an earlier segment, what I mean by that is that when you are copy editing a piece, whether it be fiction or poetry or, uh, or creative nonfiction, uh, expository prose, you should have a very good reason for making a change. Um, and what I'm suggesting in this series is that any change you make, should someone ask you, why did you make that change? It should fall into one of these categories of the five, the five C's. I covered conformity last week, and right now I am going to talk about consistency. It's related to conformity <clears throat> in a certain sense, but what I, when I think about conformity, I think about um, something that's really sort of external to the piece. So um, our dictionary, our house style manual, uh, when I'm talking about consistency, I usually think about something that's interior. Um, I usually allow a piece to set the rules for itself in a lot of respects. And as long as it abides by the rules that it sets for itself, I'm okay with whatever it wants to do. Um, I suppose on a larger scale, what that would mean would be a kind of a factual consistency throughout the piece. For instance, um, a story that we ran of Steve Almonds in the very first issue of the Cincinnati Review, and it was about an expedition to Antarctica uh, the ship's manifest was on the first page of the story. It was a short list. It was a small crew. Um, and at a certain point in the piece, like I think page eight or 10, the name of um, a member of the crew appeared that had not been on the manifest and was not uh, mentioned before that point. Uh, so that resulted in a query to Steve. It's, it was a consistency problem. And uh, basically what he said was, uh, oh, I revised this story and I changed this character's name to that and I just failed to make like a global change. So that would be one type of consistency issue. Uh, another instance would be a story we published where a main character um, was recalling a very traumatic incident from her past when she was a child and it resulted in a scar that was on her back. Um, but later in the story, when she's recalling the incident again, um, she's with her mother at the time of the incident, but the scar then um, was on the mother's back, not her back. Uh, so again, that just results in a query. And again, it was a question of, you know, someone working through the story was revising it and just failed to sort of make, make that change complete uh, throughout the rest of the story. Other things to consider regarding consistency would be how are a character's thoughts handled. Some people like to italicize those, some people like to just um, leave them in Roman type. Uh, it doesn't matter to us as long as it's not one way in one part of the piece and a different way in a different part of the piece. How are signs handled, Sign, like stop signs, like a sign that's posted on a door, um, like a placard of some kind. Um, Again, uh, if, uh, if it's all handled with all caps, that's fine. If it's all handled with italics, that's fine. If it's all handled with small caps, that's fine. It just needs to be consistent. I do let the piece set the rules for itself. Um, dialogue would be another example. Uh, it's pretty common these days for people not to want to use quotation marks around dialogue. Um, and again, that's fine. It gives a different feel to the piece. It's a stylistic choice. Um, but if suddenly um, quotation marks crop up at some point, then, you know, that's either a query or a correction. Um, I would say regarding poetry, um, things that we frequently find that are consistency issues would be uh, the first letter of every word at the beginning of a line is capitalized, but then suddenly there's one that's lowercase. Um, ampersands. Uh, a lot of poets use ampersands and um, and again I think that if if you are um, have ampersand 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 and then there's suddenly an and spelled out uh, you have to assess that. There may be a reason for that. Um, you always need to sort of study the situation and if and if there is a reason for it to be spelled out in that instance 
say it's in a sign or something, um, then you can leave it alone. But if it just seems like, um, like an oversight, then that's a query. Um, another instance would be um, sometimes there's a deliberate lack of punctuation in a lot of poetry. That works fine for us unless suddenly a semicolon appears or a comma when the rest of the poem um, has not used commas in places that would normally have commas. Uh, so that would be a query. In closing, I just want to re-emphasize the extent to which you need to assess any situation in which there's a lack of consistency. I think that it is uh, natural to want to correct. Uh, it makes us feel good to be active, to be doing something. Uh, in many cases, though, I feel like the lack of consistency is, uh, can be accounted for by a particular effect that the writer is trying to achieve. And that's one of the reasons that I often err on the side of querying rather than correcting. Especially at the beginning, I would encourage beginning copy editors to, to query more than they correct. An example would be a story, say, that had used punctuation in a completely expected and um, by the book correct way up until a particular scene. And then in this particular scene, suddenly all the commas were dropping out, uh, even periods were dropping out. Sentences were all run together. I think the impulse of a lot of copy editors might be to, to say, oh, well, the punctuation has been handled completely um, consistently before, and I need to impose those same rules on this passage. But the nature of the passage is what's important. Um, sometimes what a writer can achieve stylistically uh, by manipulating the punctuation is entirely legitimate and beneficial. So if it's an action scene, for example, or or just a scene where someone's mind is racing and that's try and the writer is trying to convey that by um, dropping the punctuation, that is something that you should consider and not tamper with, especially if it's if it's an effective um, method of uh, the writer conveying what he or she wants to convey. Um, if, if you don't feel like it's effective, then again, maybe a very delicate query to that effect, but um, be a thinking editor, not just an automatically correcting editor. Um, consistency is one of the reasons you can make a change, but you do not necessarily have to enforce it everywhere at all times. <laughs> to um, me, the important thing is to attune yourself to the piece and put yourself in the place of the writer writing it and help the writer, um, by communicating with the writer, help the piece achieve uh, its ideal form. That was a quick and dirty session on consistency. I will be back next week to talk about the third C of good copy editing, clarity.